What's up guys, welcome to Chiefs Chat, episode 24, and today I've got another special guest, Amani Garen. Say what's up. Hi. She's here, and, and we're going to talk about the Broncos game that's being played later today. It's an interesting game, considering that the last time we played the Broncos, our backups were literally in the game at the end of the game. It was, it was a pretty uh, convincing blowout there. But, uh, you know, I just want to talk to you about, uh, you know, what are your ex expectations going into this game? The Chiefs being the number one ranked offense and uh, the Broncos right now statistically having a better defense. But considering the last time we played the Broncos, we scored over 40 points. How do you feel? You know, you know, what, are you, what is your uh, score prediction going into this game? I'm kind of curious as to know, you know, what, what, what are your, your expectations are there. So. I mean, I expect the same result. You do? Yeah. OK, so here's a point I wanted to make. Now, you know, in, in, in the last game against the Broncos, we, uh, we had a very good rushing attack, and that's something that I haven't seen from the Chiefs um, in the past couple of weeks. As you can see, our rushing defense, or our, I mean, our rushing offense is currently 19th in the league, which isn't very good. Having Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Le'Veon Bell in the same backfield, you would think we would be able to create, uh, create some good space there. But it, uh, we've been struggling over the past couple of weeks, and Patrick Mahomes has really kicked it up as a quarterback. He's uh, you know, put up some crazy stats in our past few games. And here's the thing. Here's what I'm looking for in this game. I want our run defense to step it up you know, like we did um, in that first meeting against the Broncos because we've been struggling you know, past few weeks, and I think we need to have a you know, good game uh, with the rushing attack to really get our confidence up. So I'm looking for a, uh, a big game from Clyde. I'm looking for a big game from Le'Veon Bell because I haven't seen much out of him. And uh, you know, I haven't really seen much of that much out of this Chiefs uh, rushing attack since since he joined the squad, which is something, you know, I've been arguing about, you know, I, I've been making, um, you know, you know, points about how Le'Veon Bell has negatively impacted our rushing attack ever since he, you know, joined the Chiefs. And, you know, I tried to warn you guys. I, I really did. I tried to warn you guys um, that Le'Veon Bell, Le Bell wasn't going to have a positive impact. And so far, he hasn't had a positive impact. Our, our rushing attack has um, just slowly dwindled away, seemingly. So, but, you know, Patrick Mahomes, of course, he's going to save us every time. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm looking for another big game from our rushing attack this time around against the Broncos because we pretty much dominated them in that first game on, on the ground, and uh, Clyde had a big game. So um, what are your expectations for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and how do you think Patrick Mahomes is going to perform, uh, perform after having an incredible past couple of weeks you know, against the... Uh... Um, I love Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Um, oh, do you? Yeah. Yes. He's, he's a little guy on the field, but he truly gets through there, and I think that he is one of the best players that we have on our Absolutely, yeah, I agree. I'm so glad to have him on the team. And yeah, and exactly, him being a rookie, I really want to see him get a lot of snaps. I know I've argued this a lot, but I really want to see him get a lot of snaps because he's a developing guy. You know, he just came in from LSU, had, well, you know, one of the greatest uh, rushing seasons ever. You know, at LSU, obviously. Um, guys like Leonard Fournette are, are obviously king when it comes to uh, LSU running backs, but Clyde Edwards-Alaire, he was a beast down there. And, uh, you know, coming up to Kansas <laughs> City, I, I, I definitely expected that to translate, and it certainly has, uh, you know, throughout the beginning of this season. But, uh, you know, I want to see more from Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I haven't seen a lot from him, uh, you know, prior to the first half of the season. And that's kind of been a concern for me. You know, I want to see him grow as a running back, and I haven't seen much of that um, over the past couple of weeks. And, and today, I think, is, is a big opportunity to um, repeat the success we had at the beginning of the season against the Broncos and really give Clyde some confidence there. And his, his uh, you know, his rushing style, it's, it's super unique. I mean, you look at the guy, you know, he just looks like a little pipsqueak out there. You know, he's a tiny guy. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he just bounces around. He just doesn't go down. I think that's, you know, something that um, is very unique as a running back. And it's something that, you know, not a lot of guys possess, the ability to just stay upright. And he's got a very strong center of balance. He doesn't go down. I mean, he's just a, he's just a bowling ball, as I like to say. I, I know you, I know you, uh, you've heard me talk about how I, I think he's just a bowling ball. And I've heard, exactly. And I, I mean, I've heard guys on, on, on TV, you know, on CBS talking about how he's just built like a bowling ball. And that's something that not a lot of guys are like. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's interesting. So, yeah. And I, I just, I just love his rushing, uh, you know, style. I think it's very unique and, and very uh, incredible. But uh, Patrick Mahomes, all right, what am I looking for Patrick Mahomes? I, I think, you know, the first, the, exactly, the first time we played them, all right, if I'm not mistaken, he had 200 yards and one touchdown, you know, which isn't very impressive. Those are kind of mediocre stats for Patrick Mahomes, but something to, something to note is that they were in the snow, so that might have, you know, kind of taken down his ability to throw the football. But at the same time, I don't think that's what the, that's what the game plan was going into this game. I think the game plan was to rest Patrick Mahomes, you know, and, and give him some time to, you know, really prepare for the big games, which, uh, you know, we expected the Tampa Bay, um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to be a big game. We ended up, you know, handling them pretty easily, especially. It was still close. Yeah, it was close at the end of the game. But, but you know, as I talked about in my game recap, I don't think the score um, reflected, you know, how dominating of a win it really was. So, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, Patrick Mahomes, what I'm expecting in this game 
is not a lot. You know, I, I don't think uh, this is a game where he necessarily needs to go off like he's been doing, you know, 400 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think we really need that kind of a game from him. I really want to see the running back cycle get their thing going because that's that's just what I'm trying to focus on here um, in this game against the Broncos. I think it's something that we really need. We, we, we just need to find a way to really find our identity in the rushing attack and, and get um, you know, give some reps to Le'Veon Bell, see what he's all about because I haven't seen much of him. I've, I've seen him a little bit in the passing game, but... A lot of um, Le'Veon Bell slander here. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. You know, that's just how I am. I just don't... I'm not fond of the guy being on our team. I think... Uh, um, I heard something recently about how like he's like agreeing to fight with Jake Paul, something stupid like that. <laughs> I, I, I swear, I, I saw something like that on the media. <laughs> and you know, uh, you know, I, I've heard a lot about how he's a locker room guy, and uh, you know, um, I, I respect him for that. I respect him for um, you know being able to accept the fact that he's not the number one guy here in Kansas City just yet, because we've got Clyde edwards alaire and that dude is a beast as a running back and as a rookie. I mean, he is a beast, and um, I've heard, you know, guys talk about how, you know, prior to Le'Veon Bell signing with the Chiefs, he talked to Clyde Edwards-Alaire about um, how he felt about the whole situation, and, you know, he just he just uh, handled it really well, and I appreciate that about Le'Veon Bell. I think, uh, you know, he made the right move in coming to Kansas City, obviously, because he is winning. You know, we haven't lost a game since he's joined our team, which I don't think is really because of him, but, um, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's not exactly. Yeah, no, not really, but I mean, like, just it just kind of puts, in perspe uh, puts into perspective the decision that he made because he really wanted to go to a winning team after being on the Jets. So, I mean, yeah. I and obviously the Jets are kind of sucking. a really hard-working player, though. Exactly. I, like, I think, you yeah. You definitely see him out on the field. The, worth ec the, the work ethic is de definitely there. And, and we saw that back in Pittsburgh when he, uh, you know, was working on his game. And, and you know, I think we talk about Clyde was a lair running style. But he's got, you know, Le'Veon Bell, he's got a very, very unique style of running. I mean, he's a patient running back. He really changed the game. And he just trusted his offensive line because, you know, you would see him down in Pittsburgh. And I think I still kind of see a little bit of it in Kansas City where he would get the ball and he would just sit there. He would just sit there. Like, what are you doing, Le'Veon? You're just sitting there. He would just sit there behind the line of scrimmage. And what he would do is he would wait for the offensive line to create space for him. And that's something that's extremely unique. And I, uh, you know, obviously it's something he worked on back when he was in Pittsburgh. I didn't see a lot of that from college. Or, you know, I didn't see a lot of that from Le'Veon Bell when he was in college. So I think it's something he learned in the NFL. And it's something I really respect about Le'Veon Bell. But, um, you know, like as I've stated multiple times, I'm not fond of the guy being on our team. So, you know, that's all I got to say about that. But anyway, let's focus on this game. Because the Denver Broncos finally have their quarterback. Last week, I don't know if you uh, remember, but they didn't have a quarterback. They didn't have a single quarterback on the roster. They had to bring a wide receiver from the practice squad to start. And uh, he completed one pass for 13 yards and threw a couple of interceptions. So that's not very good. <laughs> and that's literally all they did in the passing game. I mean, what do you expect? One catch. I mean, one catch. And, and, and you look at their offense. They're ranked 27th in the league. I think that's fitting. I think the Broncos have a very bad offense. But Drew Locke is back, all right? Drew Locke, he's a great quarterback. And uh, he's one I'm very fond of. Not, you know, not because he's on the Broncos, but because he went to Mizzou. So got to respect him for that. <laughs> but uh, Drew Locke, you know, what do I expect out of him in this game? He didn't do much in our first meeting. So not not much, you know. <laughs> like like I think our passing defense is something that's very strong. But when you look at the uh, the, the Broncos' rushing defense, obviously some some potential there. They've been underperforming so far this year, but they've got a lot of guys in there that can dominate. So what are you expecting from our defense? How do you think we need you know what do you think we need to do to really stop this Broncos' offense? Our defense is definitely the weakest point in our team. But um, to be honest, I just don't think their offense is that good. And I feel like our defense will be able to pull through this game. Yeah, I would have to agree. Considering the fact that they're 27th, um, you know, in total offense. And, uh, you know, if you guys didn't know, well, I mean, we're first, yeah, we're first on offense, but when it comes to defense, we're about middle of the pack. And, uh, you know, the Broncos surprisingly are 10th. Um, but, you know, offense, when it comes to the Broncos, uh, just not good. And the Chiefs defense, I think we're a scrappy group. We know our identity. We know how to work as a cohesive unit. And, you know, our, our front four, we just got to dominate in this game to be able to stop the run because that's something we've really struggled with so far this year. And uh, obviously we've faced, some, uh, we've faced some pretty tough guys. Josh Jacobs uh, among those guys. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey absolutely dominated us uh, when we played the Carolina Panthers. And, uh, you know, our, our front four, we really got to step it up. I think guys like Chris Jones, I think they're they're phenomenal pass rushing guys. You know, they, they can get to the quarterback. But we got to figure out how to stop this running back. I mean, we got to figure out how to stop these runs because they are killing us so far um, on defense. And it's something that we really need to try and fix before we get to the playoffs because, you know, that could really make or break a game. You know, being able to run the ball efficiently and keeping the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands is a big problem, you know, for this for this Chiefs team. Obviously, you know, the end goal is to just make sure the offense has the ball as much as possible. So, and uh, so, 
Now I want to talk about scheming because, you know, in, in Tampa Bay uh, last week, we saw a lot of different things from the Chiefs. Now, um, you know, that Raiders game that we had a couple of weeks ago, you saw us kind of dinking and dunking the field or down the field. We didn't have a lot of big plays, didn't, uh, you know, make a lot of crazy big touchdowns. And, uh, you know, I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers kind of saw that and they were like, oh, you know what, we don't really have to. Um, you know, you know, we don't have to drop our safeties back. We can just kind of, you know, cover the cover the cover the flats and just make sure that they stay they stay in front of us. But uh, you know, that obviously was not what ended up happening because literally the first play of the game, Tyree Kill just went crazy. All right, <laughs> the, the the first quarter, all right, Tyree Kill had over 200 yards and I believe two touchdowns. I don't know if it was three. It was two or three touchdowns two. in the first quarter. Two. two, two touchdowns in the first quarter, and that's absolutely insane. So they weren't ready for us. We'll see if the Denver Broncos are ready. And I'm interested to see as to what the scheming is in the passing game because, um, you know, I'm not sure what to expect at this point. I mean, it's just so dynamic. And that's what I love about this Chiefs offense. We can do whatever we want. We've got so many weapons. I believe Sammy Watkins is inactive, so that might uh, put a limit on what we can do on offense in, in the passing game. But, uh, you know, I think we got a lot of guys like Demarcus Robinson and, and Michael Harbin who have been doing a good job at stepping up and... Uh, you know, filling that role for, um, you know, Sammy Watkins. Um, he's been injured quite a bit so far this season. He's a very injury-prone guy. So, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> tough. But um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what to expect. You can what even do you... see him try to avoid injury. Yeah, I know, in the middle of it. Yeah, exactly. He's like, like got to make sure I don't pull something, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's like my freaking grandpa. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it's just super weird. I, I, I'm not sure what to expect out of the passing game. I'm, I'm really interested, and I'm really excited to see what Patty has in store this time because it <laughs> seems to be a different thing every freaking game. I mean, I it's crazy. I actually wanted to ask you a question. And what, what's that? What's the question? So, <laughs> when, we played, when we played the Buccaneers, okay, okay, yeah. there was a lot of turnovers that game. Like, it seemed like we were able, every time we were able to get the ball, they were able to just, like, completely stop us like yeah. like they knew it yeah you mean you mean like uh, turnover on downs right is that what you that we're talking about like in the second half particularly yes yeah exactly yeah there was yeah. um and so i wanted to ask do you think that the broncos are going to kind of take a page out of the uh, you know Tampa yeah, Bay Buccaneers book in the second half? Like yeah, well, I mean, here's the thing about that. It's uh, it, it was an in-game adjustment that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did. Obviously, they didn't have a, a good game plan for the first quarter. Didn't really have a good game plan for the first half. So they went into the break. Bruce Arians, he's a fantastic head coach, won a Super Bowl with the Cardinals, I believe. But uh, you know, he you know made a plan for the second half and executed that plan flawlessly. Now, um, do I think the Broncos coaching staff is going to be able to replicate that success? Um, no, because. Like I said, this Chiefs offense is so dynamic, we can pretty much do whatever we want. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure how, as a head coach and uh, a coaching staff, you can really prepare for that because it's, it's, you know, we can do whatever we want. Hi, Dad. Making a Chiefs <laughs> chat. <laughs> the, what are, what, what, what's a Chief? What's a Chief? <laughs> I'm he not sure. Know. You know, I, I don't think he's my dad anymore. I'm going to have to uh, that's, leave. That's I'm running away. That's the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, actually. Yeah, that's Andy Reid, actually. That Andy Reid is my dad. Me. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> Phenomenal head coach. Thank you, Andy Reid, for uh, winning games. <laughs> Andy Reid will I not guess, be yeah, commenting on yeah. hey, No comment, Andy hey. Reid. So. Yeah, anyway, I think that about wraps it up. I think yeah. we pretty much covered everything we want to cover. And a uh, fantastic episode. Absolutely sexy beast. I'm on a Garen here um, with <laughs> me on Chief Chat. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, peace out, guys. I'll see you tonight or tomorrow, depending on uh, when I'm able to do it. I'll see you for the game recap. And, uh... You know, stay safe, Chiefs Kingdom, and have a great one, you know, enjoying this football game. Peace out. <laughs>